Hmm. Hi, everybody. Uh, Tuesday afternoon, it is uh, 4.36. Uh, so here is the update. Been kind of a disappointing, been a real disappointing day, actually, I think, in terms of sunshine developing for most of us. Now, behind me, yeah, there's the sun. That is gorgeous. That is uh, the camera at the Channel House. Let me get out of the way. The Channel House in Depot Bay. There's a Depot Bay 101. Yeah, the Channel House sits right here. You're overlooking the channel that goes into the bay. Absolutely gorgeous weather. So what happened to the rest of us? There's been more sun from Portland south and less from Portland to the north. Temperatures right now sitting in the mid-60s. That forecast is 68. We're going to cover that. And by that, I mean, when, as a forecaster, I try to be at, at the worst within four. I mean, obviously you're trying to hit it or be with uh, a degree or two off, but I don't really consider it a forecast miss unless I miss it by more than four degrees. But at any rate, not not great. No no doubt about that. Let's see what's what's going on. Let me bring up the, uh, oh, no, I think I've got it right here. Okay, let me pull this up. Look at all the rain on the radar. If you if you were watching the uh, me on KGW this morning, we showed a little bit of rain clipping our story in Kelso. I really thought this cloud deck producing this rain shield would have thinned and moved farther to the north by now. I mean, forecast modeling was giving us a pressure height of 582 this afternoon at 500 millibars, 18,000 feet. That should have been enough to shove the clouds and the rain threat way to our north. We've actually had some sprinkles this afternoon out of this rain just passed through parts of Clark County as well. And you can see that light rain up in Cowlitz County and some sprinkles in Clark County right now. If you scroll down, and here's the water vapor, you see the shoot of moisture that, again, has not thinned and moved to the north like I thought it would. Uh, let's see what the pressure height is. Well, here's five, let me, okay, here's 582. So yeah, we're 579, 580. You see the ridging where it arcs right here? Right there is the ridging. So this eventually will take these clouds and shove them up to our north. And I think even you folks up in Kelso Longview, Castle Rock, farther to the north, Lewis County, I had, uh, can't remember your name, I'm sorry, but from Lewis County watching us the other day, your clouds should thin overnight as well. Again, here's a look at that kind of moisture ball that's, that's moving in. So that's been a little disappointing, the, the clearing of, or lack of clearing of the cloud deck. But we do have ridging building, and here's the ridge. We have ridging building and absolutely quite a bit of sunshine coming the next couple of days. I do want to show you the rain amounts from yesterday. So last time I talked to you, we had that uh, tornado warning that was issued for Clark County. It came out at what, 256 yesterday afternoon um, on Monday, and then it was canceled at 315. Nothing ever was confirmed on the ground. We had a couple warnings that were radar indicated yesterday that didn't materialize. As far as I know, there was no lightning yesterday, no hail, no reports of it, even strong winds, but we did have those torrential downpours. The forecast had spotty showers in it, but not the torrential downpours that we had. That was just crazy. So Portland had 1.19 in downtown. That's KGW TV. Astoria at just under an inch. PDX yesterday at 79, 100, seven inch was actually a record for the date. And that pushed the October total uh, through the first 16 days of the month to 1.66, which is pretty much normal. I mean, for October, we're trying to get up to just about three and a half inches for the entire 31 days. So right now we've caught up the normal, but we're going to need some good rain pushes to keep that going. Vancouver was over half an inch. McMinnville was just barely over half of an inch of rain. So the forecast tail on this Tuesday afternoon, looking at tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, is this ridging in the upper atmosphere and a surface high building in. Uh, the latest North American model basically gives us no low-level moisture for the next couple of days. And what that should mean is the absence of any widespread or long-lasting fog, no marine pushes, and really a lot of sunshine. So let's just take a look at the flow pattern. I'm going to move myself down here a little bit, make myself a little smaller. Okay, so this is tomorrow. This is the European model. This is Wednesday morning. There's a 588 high over California. If you look at my cursor, when we see upper flow pattern, these are the contours we're talking about at 18,000 feet or 500 millibars. Five, what, 588, 580, that's a 582, 583 ridge. Um, we could see temperatures drop off enough overnight tonight that we would have some patchy fog in the morning with lows that drop into the mid 40s in some areas. I think some areas in the valley could even be 42, 43 to wake up 
in the Lama Valley in Southwest Washington tomorrow morning. If you get that low, you probably have some patchy fog. Otherwise I don't see it. And we should have beautiful sunshine. Let me just go ahead and play this into Thursday afternoon. Look, this is a strong high. My goodness, 591 high over Arizona, New Mexico, and up into Southern Nevada. And then we're still strong pressure heights, well above normal. We see the red colors of the anomaly. So that's dry, warm weather on Thursday. We're talking highs getting up into the 70s with a lot of sunshine. Friday, the, the ridge pattern starts to break down a little bit. See this little trough right here. See the little dip we call that trough. Could be a little bit of cloud cover spinning up. Notice the pressure height still 79. Here's Friday afternoon. Remember the 576 contours, generally the line, but generally, <laughs> not coming true today, but generally the line between dry and wet. So we should still be dry Friday afternoon, but we'll start to get some partly cloudy skies and maybe we get back up to 70. Maybe we don't. And then Saturday, a little bit more of cloud cover. Here's Saturday afternoon. Now we, the ridge is now over here in Colorado, Wyoming, Idaho. Here's a, a upper level low 561 and a trough offshore, more of a southwesterly flow. We're going to be getting some cloud advection coming in. Uh, I took the rain chance out on Saturday. I can't tell you today that the zero that the chance of rain on Saturday is zero, but for now I'm going to leave it dry with a day that's either going to be partly sunny or mostly cloudy. So not a lot of sun and temperatures will be held in the 60s. I've got us at 67. But maybe, keep an eye on Saturday if you have plans, maybe I eventually have to throw a shower chance back in the forecast for Saturday, but for now we'll leave it dry. Now Sunday, now we're getting into this trough. You can see there's a little disturbance that moves into Northern California. So um, there's not really a strong front that comes in with this. It's more of a dissolving low at the surface and the upper level trough coming in, but it makes sense there'll be clouds and some rain on Sunday. Sunday could be a day that's kind of drippy throughout the day. I just don't think the rain totals are going to be that impressive, but nonetheless, likely showers on Sunday with a high of about 63. And then right now, I just checked the American model, the American model and the European model that I'm showing you are all pretty identical into the day Monday. So Monday, that rain chance now drops into Southern California, Nevada. This is Monday morning. Let me go ahead and put it into Monday afternoon. Here we are Monday afternoon at 5 p.m. And now we've got some ridging. This is a northwest flow aloft. Probably a lot of clouds Monday morning, but I think we'll be dry. Then we'll become partly cloudy during the day. About 63 degrees will be normal for this time of the year. The climate numbers are really starting to drop. Normal high is now 64 for Portland. Normal low is 46. So I've been talking about these cool mornings in the 40s. Well, you know what? We're supposed to be in the more mid 40s this time of the year. What we've been getting are a lot of nights where a lot of us are still in the 50s. That's actually well above normal for this time of the year. Okay, let's go into Tuesday. Now, Tuesday is interesting. We're watching this trough up here. This is Tuesday morning. We're watching the swing in during the day with developing rain. This is a cold low. There's 549, 552, 558, 558. So that's developing rain on Tuesday. There's another rendition of the European model that comes out of uh, Penn State University. Uh, I, I look at a lot of websites and a lot of different models. The European rendition from Penn State actually shows this trough being much deeper. And it shows snow levels with absolutely likely rain and some decent breezes dropping to 5,000 feet on Tuesday. So Tuesday, keep an eye on. Could be wet and really chilly with highs only in the mid 50s. And here's that trough now we can, uh, continuing into Wednesday. So what, what does this show? 552, yeah, okay. Again, other rend renditions of the European model that came out this morning show this is more like a 540, 46 height, which is kind of really low for this time of the year. But at any rate, you get the idea of the next Tuesday, Wednesday, developing rain, really chilly with highs only in the 50s and snow levels it could get even close to 4,000 feet um wednesday during the day into wednesday night so we'll keep an eye on that this shows all of that moving this is wednesday afternoon now it's starting to move out of here and then thursday into friday of next week there's some dry ridging uh setting back up so that's kind of everything i'm looking at i do want to show you uh from my mount hood page right now it's 51 at timberline 50 at ski ball Right now, it's 55, that government camp, uh, ODOT camera. But look at the, the forecast for government camp. Well, nice tomorrow. Going to be 71 at government camp tomorrow. So that's the sign of a temperature inversion. That big ridging is going to produce 
if you look at the temperatures of the air mass, it'll be warmer at 5,000 feet at times tomorrow than it will be down low. And you're seeing that here. 71 Wednesday at government camp, it's really warm aloft. 70 Thursday, it's really warm aloft. But what I really wanted to show you is this. Next Monday. Now, this could be a dry day. In fact, I have Mondays being dry. I'm more concerned with showing you the temperatures. And by Tuesday, where I do believe it's going to be wet, I'm not really sure. This is from the National Weather Service. So it's hard for me to know what, what weather models are looking at interpreting. But I do like this. Next Tuesday, low 40s at government camp, snow level 5,000 feet or maybe lower going into Wednesday with a high 42. So again, maybe the first snowflakes over the mountain passes developing next Tuesday p.m. Uh, into Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. If you're traveling, that'll be something to keep an eye on. OK. All right. Well, here's my seven day then. We'll go mostly sunny tomorrow. There could be some patchy fog in the coldest spots, but generally I don't look for much. I think most of us, well, a lot of us anyway, will wake up to sun and we'll have beautiful sunshine Wednesday and Thursday, mid 70s. Boy, that's that's getting near records for this time of the year. Most of the records this time of the year are now upper 70s. Friday, partly cloudy. We could still hit 70, but we're starting to cool. Saturday, partly sunny, maybe more of an overcast day, 67. And again, keep an eye on Saturday. I might have to add that shower chance. We talked about Sunday showers, but maybe not a lot of total rain, 63. Monday, everything I'm looking at is dry. And then Tuesday, that that cooler weather moves. And look at Tuesday, rainy day, 56. Right now, I've got Wednesday of next week also with showers decreasing during, during the day, but also only 56. Anyway, all right. So that's my update. Um, this is my weather site, portlandweather.com. And if you haven't hit subscribe to my YouTube channel, please do so. Tell your friends about it. I'm trying to grow this channel to make it worth my time to do it. Hopefully it's something that you like having and it will become um, something that you'll check into more often as we get going into the heart of the rainy season. My winter outlook, I will probably publish either the end of next week or that following week around the 1st of November. I've got most of my work done. I just need to put the graphic package together. So that's coming up. We'll have that here on my YouTube channel. And for now, I'm meteorologist Rod Hill. And thank you as always for listening.